Dipti Laurent is here for a look through today's papers, and we're starting with Germany, where the race is on to find a replacement for Angela Merkel. As head of her uh, CDU party, that's right. It's actually a replacement to her replacement, if you like. In addition to the three existing candidates, the former German environment minister Norbert Rutgen has now thrown his name in the hat for the leadership of uh, Merkel's centre-right CDU party. They're hoping uh, that one of them will replace Angret Kramp Karrenbauer, who uh, resigned last week, of course, uh, over a scandal linked to the far right. For the German daily Der Tagesspiegel, Rutgen's candidacy. candidacy in particular changes everything. He's not from the same state as the other candidates. He's been openly critical of Merkel in the past, and his nomination uh, will uh, force uh, the party to consult with its members at a special meeting this summer. There's a lot of interest around Rutgen's candidacy. Um, the New Statesman has also penned an uh, article saying even if he's unlikely to win, he will bring new, quote, worldliness to Germany's political stage, where Merkel has put up roadblocks to some of Emmanuel Macron's proposals for EU reform. Rutgen has urged ambitious cooperation. He's also spoken, quote, uh, uh, uncomfortable truths about the need for greater transatlantic partnerships. Basically, he's a bit of a rebel. And this is a story that's also jumped the border, making the front page of Le Figaro here in France. Yeah, that's right. The paper says Germany's facing the trap of a post-Merkel era on its front page, uh, also evoking past German chancellors like Konrad Adenauer, who remains the chancellor of reconstruction, or Helmut Kohl, who was the chancellor of reunification. Merkel certainly will—her legacy will be that she was one of the most powerful female leaders of her time, but her actual legacy is more mixed. Uh, for Le Figaro, at least, Germans will still remember her as a chancellor who opened the country's doors to hundreds of thousands of refugees, and this ultimately led to the awakening of the far right and their election to the Bundestag. And here's a story that will be of interest to many people living in Europe. The UK has revealed its post-Brexit plans for immigration. That's right. The government will announce an Australian-style uh, points-based system, uh, the British press says. Uh, the decision, according to Boris Johnson, will allow Britain to take full control of its borders for the first time in decades. The new system effectively putting an end to low-skilled immigration or low-skilled migrant workers. That's on the front page of the I. The, Go the Guardian explained that it also uh, eliminates the possibility for self-employed people, essentially spelling an end to many of those who come to the UK without a job to do menial work or to do a manual labour. Artists, entertainers, sportsmen and women and musicians will still be allowed to enter for performances or auditions or competitions. But essentially, under these new rules, anyone wanting to come to the UK must have a job offer at least of, of at least £25,000, must speak English, will have no benefits for the first five years and will have to pay a fee to the National Health Service. It is, in short, an immigration revolution, at least according to the Daily Mail. We're going to take a look at the United States now, where the state of Utah has moved to decriminalize polygamy. That's people having multiple marriages. Exactly. That's right. The Utah, Utah Senate voted unanimously on Tuesday to decriminalize pol polygamy among consenting adults. It would treat the offense of polygamy as a simple infraction, like a parking ticket. Uh, that's what The Guardian explains. It still needs to go through the House of Representatives to actually be enshrined in law, but it's certainly looking like it will. Um, the state senator behind the bill said it aimed to—the uh, the aim of these lower penalties was to allow those from polygamous communities, which is who are very present in Utah, to report crimes without fear of prosecution. Critics, though, say it's uh, it's about, quote, weaponizing God. Um, on the state, on, on the subject of Utah, a personal finance website, um, for some reason, has compiled <laughs> a study uh, ranking all 50 U.S. states on how sinful they are. The criteria was um, across seven categories excesses and vice, greed, laziness, anger and hatred, jealousy, lust and vanity. Well, Utah ranked 43rd on that list, so it is the seventh least uh, sinful state of the U.S. Wyoming and Vermont were the least uh, sinful. The most sinful, though, uh, not, uh, not surprisingly, was Sin City itself, Nevada, Texas <laughs> and Florida, second and third place. Yeah, maybe not a surprise for those of us <laughs> who have visited Las Vegas before. Uh, and Dipti, finally, uh, you 
you bring us an incredible medical story. That's right. Um, 53-year-old violinist Dagmar Turner was being operated on for a brain tumor recently in South London. She actually suffered a seizure at a concert in 2013 and was uh, diagnosed with a slow-growing brain tumor, but she was hesitant to be operated on because she didn't want to lose her motor skills. Um, so surgeons, you know, cut open her brain during the surgery. What they then did was they um, woke her up mid-surgery, gave her a violin and ordered her to play the violin while they continued operating on her. It wasn't um, to ser serenade them. It was actually to ensure that parts, the parts of her brain that are responsible for her musical ability weren't inadvertently damaged during the operation. Um, a very unorthodox procedure, but it was certainly a success. 90% of her tumor has been removed. Yeah, incredible indeed. Uh, Dipti Laurent there with a look through the headlines across the world. Thank you so much. And for more of what's in the papers, you can always go to our website. That's france24.com. That's all for me this hour. But do stay with us here on France 24. More news and information coming up soon.